So now it's time for us to look at how do we actually predict the outcome of a mother and a father's genes. Um, because we kind of have, have looked at the Gregor Mendel thing and how, you know, if we know that two parents are heterozygous, they can give us a homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, or homozygous recessive child. But it's really messy to do crosses this way and, and to show how the genes come out um, because it doesn't look very nice. So remember, we have a good friend, Gregor, Greg, G, and he told us that genes have two slots of information and also that the alleles could be dominant or recessive. This is what he figured out. But where he left off was where our new friend, Reginald, came in. Reginald came up with a great tool that we still use today to predict inheritance um, because the way that it was done before that was pretty messy. So let's talk about Reginald uh, because he is an awesome friend of science. Um, Reginald Punnett was a British scientist and the majority of his um, great work that was, you know, a contribution to science was done in the early 1900s. Um, he created the Punnett Square which is what we're going to learn about today. He also published the first book um, that really gave um, genetics kind of a introduction to the great wide world called Mendelism as a tribute to our friend G. And he created the very first magazine for genetics called the Journal of Genetics. It's still in publication today over a hundred years later. So he was all about genetics and really pushed things forward in that arena. Um, so let's look at exactly how do we make this Punnett square? It's very complicated. Um, I hope that it doesn't, you know, blow your mind because we're going to practice and I promise it's going to get easier. So are you ready? You're going to draw a square, hence the square, and then a line down and across. So it kind of looks like a window that you draw in a house as a little kid. So Let's say that we have a parent that is homozygous dominant, big A, big A. And we have another parent that is homozygous recessive, little a, little a. We're going to call this person mother or ma and this person pa. So we have ma maternal and pa paternal. We're going to put one parent above the boxes on the top and we're going to put the other parents on the side. Some people will say mom's supposed to go here, it doesn't matter. So the things on the top are going to cruise down. So we're going to take big A to the two boxes below. And then the other big A to the two boxes below as well. Then our A's on the side go across. So little a goes across, little a goes to the two boxes across. And now we have a completed Punnett square. We can see that 100% of the boxes have a big A, little a. So the outcome for these two parents is going to be that all of their kids are going to be heterozygous. Um, so the thing with Punnett squares is that they predict the probability of inheritance. It gives us a percentage or ratio, which we're going to get to in a minute, of what the children will turn out like. It's a probability. It does not show what each uh, offspring will be like in order. So the first box doesn't say the first child these people have are going to look like this and the second child these people have are going to look like this because that's not how it works out. It just gives us a percentage probability of what could happen. You ready for some math? Boom! Smath alert! So, we have two different mathy words, smathy words, if you will, that we need to look at today. The first one is percentages, and the second one is ratios, and these two are very, very closely related to each other. So, uh, I'm going to draw some little Punnett squares here so that we can look at how our percentages work out, and also for ratios. So, if we have one box that's 25 percent is also one out of four ratios show us how many out of how many two is 50 percent or two out of four whoops ratios kind of look like a fraction that fell over then we can have 75 percent or three out of four and then lastly if all the boxes are colored in we have a hundred percent or four out of four. It's like quarters when you have money, 25 cents, 56, 75 cents, 100. Now there's also always the probability of having nothing filled in and that would be zero out of four or 
These numbers are completely interchangeable with each other. So don't get caught up on, you know, oh man, percentage and what does it mean if it's rate? They go back and forth. 25% is one out of four, is one fourth, is 25 cents. Okay, it's all the same idea. So now let's look at what a problem is going to look like. Jane has big B, big B for eyes, and John has big B, little b. Predict. Remember, that's what we're doing. We're predicting. We're not saying what all their children are going to look like. We're predicting what the inheritance of the genotypes and phenotypes will be for their offspring. Okay, so that means we got to draw a Punnett square. Always draw a square. Even if you think you know what the answer is, draw a square because then you won't mess it up. It's like showing your work in math. So we got big B, big B, big B, little b. Big Bs go down, and then the big B over here goes across, little b goes across. Boom. Punnett squared, done. Now, for our genotypes, we have two big B, big Bs, 50%, two big B, little Bs, and remember, we also have a 0% here of little b, little b. We always have to remember that 0% can be an answer. For our phenotype, if we're looking at eyes, then we know that we could have brown or blue. Brown is dominant. All the boxes have at least one big B, so 100% of the kids are going to have brown eyes. 0% will have blue eyes, even though two of them are carriers, just like John was a carrier, or, or two boxes, so 50% could be a carrier. So now, Quigley, this is also what someone will look like, a little bit heavier vocab, is homozygous recessive for freckles, and Quinn is heterozygous. So, what percent, not zero percent, sorry, what percent of their offspring will have freckles or should have freckles, would be expected to have the freckles? Um, so, we got to draw our square. Anytime we're looking at predicting probability, we draw that Punnett square. So, here we go. Now, if Quigley is homozygous recessive, that means homo same, recessive little, so two little f's. Quinn is heterozygous, so we got to have one of each, big F, little f. She has one freckle, one non-freckle. So this time, let's get crazy. We're going to take our little f's across and our big F across, and then little f's come down. And now we get freckles. So in this case, we don't have to do all the genotypes and phenotypes because we just want to know what percent has freckles. So let's look at the boxes. If big F equals freckles, how many boxes have big F? One, two. So that's 50% will have freckles. And two of the boxes do not, so we would expect that 50% of their children would not have freckles. Now, they could have 10 kids and all 10 kids could have freckles because every single time they have a child, this probability is in place, 50-50 every time. They could have 10 kids without freckles. We're just looking at probability of inheritance. So now, my friends, you can go forth and predict using Le Square and Reginald Punnett.